Well, Blizzard, this seems familiar, doesn't it? Yes, here we are again, ladies and gents, if indeed we ever truly left. It's getting real cozy here, and the special kind of hell that's created when your games are made by career labor criminals and cartoonish movie villain parody like Activision Blizzard. This is just fantastic work by the suits over there. You love to see it. You know, I always hear a lot about how their games are the worst kind of exploitative, bait and switch, minimum viable product tripe, and they definitely are. But I don't think people give Blizzard enough credit for the unrelenting clockwork efficiency of the anti-labor violence engine that they've created to systematically demoralize and coerce their employees. The dedication and sociopathic bloodthirst required to maintain the levels of human misery that saturate Blizzard and everything that they're involved with is by far their most impressive accomplishment as a company. I mean, sure, Diablo Immortal is a towering monument to humanity's worst instincts. Not just any corpo sweatshop can turn out an abomination like that. But the kind of pure, raw, unadulterated, inhuman evil necessary to so monstrously mistreat a global workforce of thousands of desperate, struggling people doesn't even compare. That's why Blizzard will always be the GOAT, and why we must go deep inside. So what exactly have those scamps been getting up to this time? What new innovations in the field of employee mistreatment have been implemented? Ah, uh, sex crimes by management? No, oh, already covered that. Racist bullying? Nope, been there too. Uh, mass layoffs despite record profits? Oops, <laughs> done that as well. What about something crazy like sympathizing with authoritarian regimes and knob slobbing commies? That's ridiculous, they couldn't possibly. Oh, right, never mind. Um, looks like y'all covered that too. What about taking advantage of the enthusiasm, genuine passion for games of hundreds of employees by refusing to pay competitive living wages? Nope. <laughs> no, silly me. You guys already got that covered as well. Wow, that's very thorough. Glad to see Blizzard is still capable of putting sincere effort into things, just not video games. So, if it's not any of that, what's in their Corpo Crimes DLC this time? Is there any horrifying disaster capitalism nightmare left that they haven't already inflicted upon customers and the working class? Rest assured, if there is something that left incomplete, unlike their games, they're definitely going to go back to finish the job, and that's where we find them today. Our story begins at a recent Q&A presentation intended to address an employee satisfaction survey, an oxymoron if I've ever heard one, held with employees by Blizzard leadership. And if you know anything about Blizzard's idea of a presentation, you already know that, to put it lightly, it did not go well. Yes, it seems incredibly that their labor units, otherwise known to us normal people as employees, didn't appreciate what was on offer. Yep, ever sensitive to the needs of the peasants in the fields, Blizzard management thought that this would be a great time to announce a bunch of low priority changes, like how everyone will be receiving less than 60% of their promised bonus, and that they plan to continue to measure their workers' performance with a dehumanizing stacked ranking system in a fucking spreadsheet like pigs in a bacon factory. Damn, they didn't like that? That's crazy. And this is during a period of time that management has been describing as a strong financial performance in the beginning of 2023, where sales and operating income nearly doubled largely due to games like Warcraft, Overwatch, and Diablo, all generating more than 100 million in net bookings. Games, need I remind you, that were created by the labor force and not the executives. This is a textbook reminder that whether or not a company is doing well, the only constant is what remains expendable. You. Workers are always the first thing to go. Company losing money, you're fired. Company makes lots of money, you're fired. They'll fire you to cut costs just as quickly as they'll fire you because they had a good quarter and they don't think they need you. At a company like Blizzard, your head is never far from the chopping block. It's just amazing that that kind of atmosphere hasn't cultivated more positivity and better games. <laughs> That's so weird. Now, in fairness, because we are fair over here, Blizzard President Mike Ibarra was quick to mention that the bonus and profit sharing cut applies to executives as well as wage slaves. Oh. However, he suspiciously was not quick to mention the vast yawning gulf that exists between 60% for a CEO salary in the millions or an executive salary in the high six figures and 60% of a QA tester making 14 bucks an hour or an animation department grunt in a cubicle trying to support a family in Southern California on barely 80K a year. This smarmy fuck was too much of a pussy to answer anything except for pre-screened questions, but still had the audacity to say that workers who believe executives are making more money are living in a myth. I mean, what you're doing to them is so astoundingly cruel that it must certainly seem fictional to someone not already familiar with how things are done here at Ground Zero for Corporal Bloodsport, but trust, 
it's very real, regardless of what devious, horrible nightmare people like CEOs try to tell them. If your compensation is so on par with the rest of your workers, how about we just replace your CEO bonus package with a fucking pizza party then? How'd that be? Mmm, wouldn't like that too much. <laughs> I wonder why. But naturally, no, the litany of recent perversity Blizzard is guilty of did not end there. For the highlight of this employee enrichment and motivation exercise, they also targeted perhaps the one positive thing that came out of the pandemic, people being able to work from home. And since doing so provided their workers the first real bit of respite or maybe even just good news that they've had in years, possibly ever, naturally capital owners and the managerial class everywhere fucking hate it and Blizzard, just like every other gigantic destructive corpo edifice, couldn't get the fuck rid of it fast enough. Back to the mines, bitches. Not because it caused a decrease in profits, productivity, work quality, revenue, or anything quantifiable like that. Oh no. Work from home needed to be abolished because for the types of sociopathic, small-minded, narcissistic fucks that typically inhabit the executive suite, having slaves and a small amount of power isn't quite as fun when you don't have anyone to wield it over. Or in Blizzard's case, maybe they just realize it's much harder to sexually assault employees when they're in their homes instead of locked in your office. In any case, from his safe space and between bouts of condescension and casual dismissal of his employees' concerns, President Mike Ybarra did confirm that, hey, BT dubs, we know you've all been worrying about it, but return to office mandate does begin in a few months, at which point y'all stupid fucks will need to be back in the office with your pants around your ankles. No, the fact that you've released games that have made me personally literal piles of money and been critically acclaimed in the two years since you've been working from home doesn't matter in the slightest. Concerns like costs associated with commuting to work or maybe moving for those hired out of state during the panty, had they been permitted to be voiced, would have fallen on predictably deaf ears. A fact callously confirmed by official Blizz lapdog Andrew Reynolds, who when asked said, we make decisions at times that not everyone will agree with. Like any other business leader with a team of over 4,500 individuals. <laughs> Translated, that means that the problem is not that these kind of nightmarish dystopian policies are the commonplace standard. The problem is actually that people still have the gall to not agree with them. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Imagine having the audacity to want to be treated with respect and paid a decent wage. Man, I hate it when the fucking poors won't stay in line. <laughs> now, no horror movie would be complete without the monster coming back in the final act for one last scare. So, not content with the damage and panic he'd already caused, Yabara, Mr. Sloppy Penis himself, had to leave everyone with just one final threat before the credits rolled. The specific bunch of words he actually said is unimportant. What matters is how they were intended and interpreted. And among workers, the consensus was that they were generally intended to mean, hey, and not, uh, by the way, if you don't like it, shut the fuck up and get out. Not the exact quote, of course, but to me, that sounds only like the most believable shit that I've ever heard. Indeed, Blizzard confirmed to Polygon that Ybarra's statements were correctly quoted, not by me, but added that Blizzard is listening to the team's feedback. Oh, because of course they are, right? Nothing says Blizzard Entertainment like adding insult to injury. Now, surprisingly, there is some slightly positive news surrounding this whole stale shit show rerun that Blizzard seems intent on forcing us all to watch every couple months. QA workers at multiple Activision Blizzard studios are organizing unions and already two have succeeded in successfully unionizing. Personally, I'm more than a little shocked Blizz didn't pull a Tesla and just fire everyone involved like Elon did when faced with labor organizing a few weeks ago, but I'm always down for a pleasant surprise. Good luck to them and I hope they fuck Blizzard as hard as possible. See, this is the kind of activism that matters and gets results. The hard kind that involves brave people taking risks and putting boots on the ground. Not to be confused with self-indulgent, whiny social media tantrums that can be done from a bedroom in pajamas that accomplish little beyond turning public sentiment against whatever your cause is and showcasing your cloying eagerness to be the center of attention. Sort of like a self-obsessed billionaire buying up a social media platform because he was born too early to be a school shooter. Oh, uh, see you're organizing your workplace despite constant threats and possibly losing your job. <laughs> well, I'm something of an activist myself. Have you heard about that wizard game? My tweets about it have quite a bit of likes. I even got a 50k retweet. Yeah, you should check out my substack. <laughs> anyway, as the video title suggests, we all know this is hardly surprising, especially from a debased, ruined developer like Blizzard. 
but since this particular tale of tragedy and woe does happen to involve labor rights activism, I felt that it was important to cover it. So it was good to show that change, however small, is still possible and that sometimes, sometimes, the arc of history does indeed bend towards justice. Exactly how far towards justice this particular union movement will go, only time will tell, but you still love to see it. It's always a fucking uphill battle. A story like this one, by showcasing the disdain with which these huge developers and publishers treat their workers, it's also telling you exactly how those companies view people like me and you, customers, and what they would do to us if given the opportunity. See, consumer, worker, it's all the same to them. It's a resource to be exploited. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you're ever on the team. Just like their workers, we are not on the team. We are not in the club. Oh, nobody panic though, that's just the that's just the fun loving games industry. It's completely harmless. Big business, entirely profit driven, but the games industry is different because they make video games and video games are fun. It's definitely not a machine built on human suffering that tries to take your money by lying to you. That would be crazy. Obviously I'm <laughs> being sarcastic, but you'd be shocked at how many people wouldn't think so. Guys, market forces move companies, not a passion for art and a love of games or tweets or your trust, Reddit posts or bootlicking white knights in the QRTs. You want to affect them? You affect the market forces. It's not a choice for a company, it's a survival trait. A company not moved by market forces, it's no longer a company. That doesn't excuse companies like Blizzard, obviously. It actually reinforces my point. See, there are plenty of ways to be profitable without ruining the lives of your workers. Blizzard just doesn't care to find them. Anyways, that's all for this edition of Unpleasant Realities. Hope you all enjoyed our happy, fun time show tonight. <laughs> Thanks for chilling. Spend a little bit of your free time with us. We love you today. We love you all the way, like no one else, baby. Sorry, I gotta cut the video here, though. I need to go buy for Spoken. Square Enix would never lie to me just to get my money, so it must be really awesome. Yo, yo, woke up, smoke up, blood, and I'm pass out. Pass, pass out. Huh? Woke up, what up, smoke up, blood, and I'm back down. Back, back down. What? Yup, yup, woke up, smoke a blunt, then I pass out, pass, pass out, huh? Woke up, what up, smoke a blunt, then I pass out.